Hello Booktube, this is Leo from A Little Book Life. And this time I would like to tell you about the books I read in March. I had a good reading month with some interesting books. And the first one I read was the newest novel by Guy Gabriel Kay, A Brightness Long Ago. I've read several novels of uh, Kay in the past and I'm quite a fan of his. Uh, he is regarded by many as a fantasy writer, but he is only so in his very first novels, and, um, and then only so in the slightest way possible. For example, there is no magic in his, uh, in his, in his work. And most of his books uh, feel like uh, historical novels. The only thing is that they are set in a historical world, which is imaginary, but is very reminis reminiscent of our own, uh, even to the point of geography. This one is set in uh, a society that is exactly like Renaissance Italy, ruled by city-states. It is about a young man who climbs the ranks from a dressmaker's son to the offices of the rulers of a city that is clearly based on Venice and he gets involved in the machinations of the ruling families of several cities. Like all of Kay's novels, this is gorgeously written and absolutely believable. You feel yourself transported into the Renaissance in reading this page turner. Highly recommended. And after hearing Sarah from Hardcover Hearts talking about this novel, Passing, by Nella Larsen, someone I had not heard of before, I decided to read it, and what a great read it was. Nella Larsen wrote only two novels, and three short stories, which is quite sad, because she wrote very, very well. Passing was first published in 1929. And it is a story about a woman who passed, which means that she is an African-American who is so light-skinned that she decides to pass as white. Frankly, it shocked me. I had never heard or read about this before, and although I can understand some of the background and the reasons why some people uh, practice this, it is so sad that you would hide your true self. This is very fine writing and it depicts, besides this main subject, a stunning femme, fit, femme fatale. Envy, betrayal and in the end there's revenge. Excellent one. Um, you will hear more from me about her because I have ordered her other novel and um, her short stories too. Another excellent book I read was Cleanest by Garth Greenwell, of which I will tell in a separate video that is to come soon. I can tell you though that it is a book that is very thought-provoking, intelligent, and I was quite impressed by it. But more to come. Uh, Ollie from the channel Book Draw and I buddy read this quite famous novel, Confessions of a Mask, by Japanese writer Yukio Mishima, of which Ollie sent me this beautiful copy. Because look, when you take the cover off, what a beautiful, beautiful uh, book this is. Um, this novel is about a young man who is gay and he develops kind of sadomasochistic fetish when he sees an image of Saint Sebastian pierced with arrows as a boy. He struggles with his feelings and he does not dare to show his true face and therefore symbolically speaking wears a mask. In imperial wartime Japan it is next to impossible of course not to. He tries desperately to fall in love with a girl, which obviously doesn't work. 
Ollie and I were both not very impressed by this novel, mainly because of how the narrator became more and more cruel and selfish in his, uh, in his thoughts and behavior. And in the end, he became even unlikable. <clears throat> I was at the end really a bit relieved to say goodbye to this character. But even though it, it, it is a remarkable book and uh, I'm still glad we read it because it is such an iconic one. And uh, to think that this story, which is at times very explicit, could have been published in Japan in 1949 is quite something. Uh, and then, yeah, I have to tell you something about uh, where I live in the Netherlands. We have every year in March uh, a national book week, we call it. Next to much media attention to literature and uh, reading, a Dutch author writes a book especially for this occasion. And everyone who buys a book during this week gets it as a present from the bookstore. And this is a tradition that goes back into the 1930s, yes, uh, so almost a hundred years uh, now, and of, of last century. And this year the present was to me, I, I got them uh, since my childhood, so I have read many, but this was the best ever to me. Uh, Leon and Juliette by Anniette van der Zell. It is a remarkable story that really happened of Leon, Leon, uh, a white Dutch man who in the early 19th century travels to Charleston, South Carolina, in order to, he wants to uh, make a fortune over there, in which he succeeds, by the way. And he falls in love with Juliet, a black enslaved girl. He secretly, they secretly marry and they start a family, something that was, of course, very dangerous for mixed couples in American society in those days. After years, he succeeds to smuggle his children one by one on a ship to the Netherlands. And finally, in the end, his wife, too. There he becomes a mayor of a coastal town and they live as a well-respected society couple. The graveside of uh, them and their many children, they, they got, I don't know, really many, uh, it is still a memorial site uh, you can visit today. It is a remarkable story. And Anniette van der Zell is a very accomplished writer who turned this into a real page turner that will be published in the United States also. So look out for this one in English. I highly recommend it. And then the cherry on the cake in March was Anita Bruckner, her debut novel, A Start in Life. Uh, this was a buddy read with Sarah and we both loved it so much that we decided to read all of Anita Bruckner's novels in uh, publication order. 24 novels, so it will take two years. And I must say, um, you know how once in a while you can get so totally and unexpectedly smitten by an author's writer writing, that you get this literary crush, you know? Well, it happened to me when reading this. I had never read anything by Anita Bruckner, and actually I thought she was an American writer, but in fact she was English, and she lived from 1921, no, uh, 1928 to 2016. The way she wrote, so elegantly and there is striking sentence after striking sentence that leaves you thinking how absolutely wise true and so to the point really stunning 
Sarah and I kept reading all these sentences aloud to each other and we were so in awe every time. It is about a young woman who studies literature, in particular Balzac, and who does not manage to get her life in order to live as an independent adult. And she heavily relies on literature for her mental well-being. The opening sentence when she looks back at her life so far is re really remarkable. Dr. Weiss, at 40, knew that her life had been ruined by literature. The main character does not succeed in maintaining a long-term relationship with men or with friends and ends up taking care of her parents, who are, when it comes to it, like little children. And apparently Bruckner poured much of her own life experience into this first novel, which she, she only began writing at a, at a late age. It is about loneliness, a theme that apparently is central in the works of Anita Bruckner, and it is filled with these lifelike characters and a heroine that you cannot but feel compassion for. So, all in all, a very good reading month. Now I am waiting for uh, the next round of the Booktube Prize, where, if I'm in it, uh, the next six books will be allotted to the jury members. And I want to take part in uh, two read-alongs, um, one of a Victorian novel, Dear Brook, by Harriet Martineau, which Kate Howe is organizing next month, and also uh, in the read-along of Belinda uh, by Maria Edgeworth, uh, an 18th century novelist uh, that Sarah hosts. And in case you are interested and want to participate, I think you still can. Uh, you can find links to both uh, of their announcement videos uh, below. Well, that was it for now. See you next time, and I hope all of you, of course, are safe and healthy. And take care, all of you. Keep social distance and stay safe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.